Hey team, Coach Kinsey here, coming at you with a uh, hot take on four reasons I believe fitness apps are failing you. Dun, dun, dun. I know, it's crazy, but hear me out, okay? Before I even get started, let me just say, apps are a wonderful thing, right? Especially during the pandemic, a lot of us, most of us, almost all of us, unless we had a home gym, did not have access to a gym. So apps came in in a big way and they kept a lot of us moving in a groove in when there weren't a lot of other options. And for that, I love them. And here's the other thing. I've been working at a gym since we reopened and I've noticed that a lot of people who come in to work out at the gym are using the apps to give themselves workouts. So again, these things are great. If they're getting you moving and they're motivating you and they're maybe even educating you or making you brave enough to come try the machines at the gym or have a workout plan that maybe you didn't have before, I am here for it. But uh, let me just bend your ear and sip a bit on the haterade while I go through four reasons that I'd just like you to uh, think about. And number one. Okay, this is the big one. This is actually the reason that I decided to sit my cute little tush down and chat with and at you. Apps, for all the wonderful things they can do, they cannot, and let me say it louder, they cannot keep you safe. All right. I was chatting with a client the other day and she was talking about how she finally feels comfortable working out in the gym because she has an app and it gives her a toolkit for how even to work out. To which I said, amazing. So we kept chitting, we kept chatting and I asked her what she was working on today. She said legs. I say, hey girl, you're gonna do some of those deadlifts? She goes, of course I am. I love it when it hurts in my lower back after that's how I know I really lifted hard. This is not anyone's fault, but AI. Let me just take a hard and fast break for everyone out there. Please, 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 if you feel a deadlift in your lower back, stop immediately. This is a posterior chain workout, but it's your booty, it's your hamstrings, your lats are active because you're holding a lot of weight, but if you start feeling that in the lower back, that is a recipe for injury. And you know what, an app can never tell you that. Well, I guess it could like prompt you, but it can never cue your form. So that for me is the number one thing that apps are missing. They are unable to tell you when you are moving unsafely. And the thing that stinks about that for so many reasons is that I've seen people go out with lower back injuries, people who have worked so hard to start a routine in the first place. And not only does it suck to backslide, but for a lot of us, the motivation to get into a gym is like a small miracle. Let's just recognize that showing up and I mean this, is probably the hardest part. So to be taken out of your routine for six plus weeks because of an injury, we don't need that. So what can a PT and a trainer do? Well, I will tell you, they can give you hands-on adjustment. And if you're not into that, they can give you cues verbally. They're also there to help train your mind-body awareness. So eventually, hopefully, you start to develop that connection. So then, yeah, maybe later down the road, an app is a cool idea, right? Because now you know, like, oh, I'm feeling it in my lower back. What did my trainer tell me? Excellent, fix my form, yada, yada, yada. So that's a one. A number, so apps don't know ya and they don't love ya. They do not know how to cater and scale to what you need, not only to keep you safe, but also to hit your individual goals. Everybody's body is a different. And that's where a coach comes in because they can work, get to knowing your body, get to knowing your goals, know where you're at, know where you've been, to know how to get you where you're going. So we talked a little bit about injury. So in line with that, apps don't know when to tell you to modify. They can't see that maybe a jumping progression is unsafe or we need to build to it. So they don't take you into the squat to calf raise, for example. Maybe they don't recognize that you are lifting too much weight. You see it in the picture, you do it, of course you do, that's how we learn. But if you're going over what you need to be going, you're probably getting into improper movement patterns. You're probably putting the strain on muscles that are not supposed to be the dominant muscle. There's a whole slew of things going wrong that an app isn't gonna tell you. So they're not gonna give you all of those variations that help you build to where you wanna go. And on top of that, they usually, well, we'll get there, but they say kind of stagnant. So you're not giving yourself that muscle confusion. And on the other side of that same coin, they don't challenge you. You might be just, chilling with 35 pound thrusters and the app's not gonna go, all right, go ahead, 40 pounds it is. So you plateau. I see that a lot too. People who use apps, 
They love them, they're getting great results, and then all of a sudden, crickets. And maybe they even start to find a little bit of that backslide because the app doesn't teach you how to progress based on where you're going and where you've been. But a coach, they know when to push you, they know when to dial you back, and they know when to rev you up. Huh, you dig? Mm. Number three, apps don't care if you don't show up. I said they don't love you, they don't need you. Well, we need them. So you miss a workout, that's okay. Everyone does it. But what the app isn't gonna do is make sure that they check in and get you scheduled for your next workout. It can feel like that phone weighs 800 freaking pounds when you're trying to pick it up to motivate yourself to work out. For some of us, we're just naturally self-motivated and that is incredible. And for a lot of us, we've got a lot of other factors in life that make working out really hard. We work long hours at our job. We have kiddos. We're going to school. We're tired. We're on our period. La 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 la. Life goes on and on. And sometimes, I know, sometimes exercise seems like one of those things we can let go of to just get through our day. That is one of the trickiest parts that I've seen. When people start losing motivation, the app is a really great tool when you have motivation, but the second that motivation is gone, it is not going to be the thing that lights the fire under your butt. Whereas one really great thing about having a personal trainer, if you pull the bail switch, the personal trainer is going to reach out, check in with you, get you rescheduled. They help as a little external motivation. Not to mention, if you cancel last minute, usually there's a fee, so there's a little monetary motivation as well. Same with group classes. Group classes, a, a lot of them charge you if you last minute cancel. I mean, that sounds like pretty good motivation to me. Not to mention, when we start going to group classes or even working one-on-one -on -one with a person, we start to build that personal connection. So even on days when we're not feeling the whole lift and repeat thing, Maybe we just go in because we want to see our gym friends. Been there, love it. It's why this kid pretty much sticks to group classes. Period. Number four, we pay when we pay attention. So this talks a little bit about what I brushed on in step three. When we are spending money, we have a better tendency to show up because we're investing our well-earned money. And that's good, we should invest in ourselves. With apps, generally one of the things that people really like about them is they're cheap or even free. And again, if it gets you started with fitness, I am here for it, I am not knocking it. But does it keep you there? And this is where I'm gonna take a hot second to tell you a little story about this kid. So, I have been dabbling at the same yoga studio for about 10 years on and off through class pass or paying for drop-ins. Finally, I decide that it's time that I just shell out and buy a membership. Woo! It's not the cheapest thing, but it's something that's important to me and it's something that I really want to invest in. So I pay for it. And you know what? I'm going like five to six times a week to this yoga studio. I'm loving it. I'm earning. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all my bang for my buck. And I get into this great routine. I sign up for class ahead of time because I know I'll be charged if I don't show up. I mean, I'm finding a lot of accountability in something that over the last 10 years, maybe I do once or twice a month. Fast forward, this is great. This month pops off without a problem until there's a little issue with my billing. They start charging me nothing for my membership. Let's just stop right here so I can say, I did try to fix this. I went in, I told the desk and they said, we'll look into that for you because I had started creating relationships and they were very sweet. What I didn't know and they didn't know was that it would lead to uh, not seeing a whole lot of each other. At first I was like free membership. Oh my gosh, the universe is coming up, Kinsey. I can walk to this place. I know after ex for, from experience that I can get here five, six times a week. This is great. But the second I stopped paying for that studio, I maybe went twice in the first month. It has been 10 months. <gasps> and I've started doing yoga again, and I still technically have that membership, they never canceled it, but now I go to a studio where I pay because I personally need the accountability to show up. Maybe that's not all of us, that's a-okay, but having worked in a gym and in especially boutique fitness, knowing that that charge for Miss Class is there, I've seen it work for a lot of people. 
So again, maybe that's not your number one like motivator in life, but also I am a firm believer too that when we invest in ourselves, we're showing ourselves that we care. You know, there's so many things in life that we we don't treat ourselves to. And sometimes taking care of ourselves falls off to the wayside. So there you have it. My hat take on four reasons why you should drop the app and work with group fitness or a PT. Apps can get you injured. Apps can't scale to you. Apps don't care if you show up. And you better bet we pay attention when we pay. Again, this is just from having worked with hundreds of people in the fitness world. So if it resonated with you at all, I hope it helps just to give that little light underneath your tushy to find something else on that fitness journey that might help you explore something you've never tried before. And again, if the apps are working for you, keep on doing your things, but just keep this in the back of the head. And when you're ready, we're here for you. Get it fit fam.